Hi, welcome to the Cool Worlds channel. Today with me, Jane Berkeley, and today I'm going to tell you about one of our best chances for finding out what's in the atmosphere of the nearest exoplanet. Now, if you're a regular watcher of this channel, you've probably heard of the planet Proxima b. And if you haven't, let me explain. Proxima b was announced in August this year. We have found a planet around the nearest star, Proxima Centauri. And it is a small, rocky planet about the mass of the Earth that orbits the nearest star to the solar system, Proxima Centauri. Proxima Centauri itself is a small red star, and Proxima b orbits at a distance from that star that is at the temperature that's just right that liquid water could perhaps exist on its surface. Now, we know on Earth that water is essential for life, and so Proxima b represents one of the very best targets that we have for looking for life elsewhere in our galaxy. So, how do we find out what's in the atmosphere of an exoplanet? One of the best methods that's been used so far is something called transmission spectroscopy. Now, all this is, is we just look when the planet passes in front of its star along our line of sight. And as it does that, light from the star behind it filters through the atmosphere of the planet. And when it does that, it picks up the spectral fingerprint of the planet itself. Now, this can be signatures of molecules such as uh, water or carbon dioxide, possibly even oxygen. However, for Proxima b, as some of you may have seen in previous videos on this channel, it doesn't look like it transits. That means the angle at which we're looking at the system is not quite at the right inclination and so we don't see the planet pass in front of its star and we don't get that filtering of the starlight. So we need another method. With Proxima b we have an advantage. The amount of time it takes for Proxima b to complete one orbit of its host star, as in one Proxima b year, actually only takes 11 Earth days. Now that means that Proxima b is moving very fast. We can use this to our advantage and use that velocity information to disentangle all the spectral features from Proxima b that would tell us what's in its atmosphere from the contaminating effects of the star and even our own atmosphere. The way this works is to use the concept of Doppler shift. Now Doppler shift you experience probably every day and it's the stretching and compressing of waves either with sound or light as an object moves towards or away from you. For example, as a car is coming towards you, the sound waves get compressed, and that means that the pitch goes higher. The same effect happens with light. As an object is coming towards you, the light actually shifts to the blue, and as it moves away from you, the light shifts to the red. Now, Proxima b is moving at approximately 40 kilometers per second. That's, that's a huge shift. So, how does that help us? Well, the light that comes from Proxima b itself contains its unique spectral fingerprint. Each molecule in the atmosphere absorbs different colours of light in a very specific pattern. Now, that pattern also red and blue shifts with the planet as it moves towards and away from you. So, we can use this highly unique pattern of lines with that change in velocity to actually see those molecules in the atmosphere of Proxima b itself. And we can do that without it transiting. This is a method that was first shown to work in 2010 by Ignaz Nallen and his exoplanet group at Leiden in the Netherlands. And since then, it's been very successful in detecting molecules in the atmospheres of hot Jupiters. So hot Jupiters are providing a real training ground or testbed for developing this particular technique to look for molecules in the atmospheres of nearby potentially habitable worlds. The only problem for Proxima b is that it is very faint. So what we need are lots of photons. And in order to get those photons, we need a big light bucket. Fortunately, over the last 10 to 20 years, plans have been put in motion to build enormous ground-based telescopes. Now these incredible machines will be able to really collect enough photons from Proxima b that we need to be able to pull out its signature and look at what molecules are in its atmosphere. If Proxima b has an atmosphere, and if it does contain oxygen, that with these extremely large telescopes that all come online 
in the early 2020s, we will have a robust and unambiguous answer as to what molecules make up the atmosphere approximately. And I think that will be one of the hallmark and most profound findings that the extremely large telescopes will give us within our lifetimes. Okay, I hope you enjoyed learning about Proxima B. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel um, for more like it. And thank you for watching.